I am really not a picky eater, but I've never found the idea of eating insects to be appealing. I grew up in the United States where entomophagy, or the consumption of insects, is not a cultural norm. I'm Dutch by heritage, and the Netherlands is also a country that does not normally include insects in its cuisine. But the Dutch have contributed some very interesting research about how eating insects can help lower our carbon footprint. A 2012 study by researchers at Wageningen University found that mealworms specifically have a smaller carbon footprint per kilogram of edible protein than milk, pork, chicken, or beef. Beef specifically had a carbon footprint anywhere from 6 to 13 times larger than mealworms. So basically, insects are incredibly eco-friendly as a protein source. When I first heard about this, it got me very excited. So my next question was naturally, what does the nutritional profile of insects look like? How healthy are they? And it turns out that insects are pretty darn healthy. Most insects share a similar macronutrient profile. They're predominantly protein, have a moderate amount of fat, and little to no carbs. They're high in fiber, have a number of different micronutrients. So mealworms specifically contain a lot of B vitamins. They can also contain a lot of vitamin D if the mealworms have been raised with UVB exposure. If you're interested in getting into the nutritional details, I will post a link to a study down below that goes really into depth comparing crickets, mealworms, superworms, and waxworms across a bunch of different nutritional dimensions. But basically, it turns out insects are incredibly eco-friendly, incredibly healthy, so the only reason I am not eating them <laughs> as someone who is not picky is because of social norms, and I really want to get over it. I don't like the fact that I don't eat something just because it's unfamiliar to me, so this video is all about one week of mealworm insect exposure so that by the end of this week, I'm hoping I feel a little more comfortable and confident including insects in my meal. For context, I've dabbled in entomophagy in the past. Around seven years ago, I set out to find my personal favorite type of insect. I tried cricket flower, I tried loctis, I tried freeze-dried mealworms, and these freeze-dried mealworms really were my favorite type of insect because they're very light in flavor, they're a little nutty and crunchy, and they're not as earthy tasting as some of the other types of insects. They seem like they would be very complementary to a number of different types of foods, so let's put that to the test. By the way, I'm Robin, hello, and welcome to the Science of Self-Care. If you are new here, I talk about science, self-care, and all things wellness. I would love, before we delve into the recipes, if you share down below your thoughts on eating insects, whether it's something you've tried before, whether it's something you do regularly, or whether you are completely disgusted by the idea, share down below. I wanna get some really interesting conversations started in the comments. Now back to the video. Seven days of mealworms with seven different recipes. Let's see how this goes. So I think I'm gonna do a coconut yogurt bowl with some sweet granola and this mixed in. So, but maybe let's first do a taste test. Here they are. <laughs> for some reason I don't feel like eating mealworms today, but we're gonna do this for the video. Some days it seems more appealing than others. For some reason, maybe because I'm a little sick, this does not seem appealing. <laughs> Here we go, down the hatchet. They taste so much better than they look. I forgot these are actually good. <laughs> Mealworms have a nuttiness, they're crunchy. It's actually kind of good. So let's put this on top of a yogurt bowl and see how that tastes tastes. We're basically combining this granola with these mealworms to make this crunchy creation. And I'm going to pour that on top of this yogurt bowl. Time to eat breakfast! If I squint my eyes, I don't even see the mealworms. And if I mix it up, I certainly don't see the mealworms. So let's just take a few bites and see how it tastes. Oh my god. It's honestly delicious, and I do not taste... Oh. It's actually really delicious. <laughs> Maybe I taste the mealworm slightly, but it's not bothersome, and if someone did not tell me there were mealworms in this granola, I wouldn't think twice about eating it. 
So now that I've mixed everything with the yogurt, I don't even see the mealworms and I actually am enjoying this breakfast, which is kind of miraculous because <laughs> I wasn't looking forward to it. Mm. Breakfast with mealworms, nine out of 10. Mm. We're off to a very strong start this morning. I just got a facial, so please ignore my kind of shiny, puffy, reddish skin. We are now about to make mealworm fried rice. I'm going to cook that up, show you what it looks like, and then tell you how it tastes. So here is my nice little bowl of mealworm vegetable fried rice. And now let's give it a little taste test. It's actually good. Good. This is actually so good. Wow, I'm impressed. I also put fewer mealworms in this rice than my breakfast recipe. I think it's nice, just adds a little touch of crunch and a little bit of a nutty flavor, but it's not so present. I think the concept of eating mealworms and fried rice is more appealing to me than in breakfast. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe this is a 9.5. This is just legitimately good. So here we are, day three of this mealworm extravaganza, and I'm actually going to a children's birthday party today. And not just any children's birthday party, but a very Dutch one in which we are going on a boat and eating all-you-can-eat Dutch pancakes. And Dutch pancakes are more like French crepes, not like American pancakes. They're thin and you fold them and you put all sorts of things inside. So I'm going to bring a little bag of mealworms and add them into my pancakes because I feel like this would actually be such a good combination. I am a little nervous about this being a children's birthday party and other kids noticing I'm adding worms to my pancakes, but let's see if I can get away with it. I will see you on the boat. Okay, so this was hard to film, but I was able to step away from the table and add little bits of mealworm on my pancake, and then I covered the mealworms in fried onions, so no one could tell what I was doing. And let me tell you, holy moly, this was delicious. I'm giving this a 9.69 just because I can. And because it was extra fatty and yummy, the mealworms were really a nice extra crunch. Guys, I am feeling a little under the weather today, but the show must go on. So I'm thinking of making a little mealworm snack now. Uh, using a rice cake and putting some avocado on top and then topping that off with mealworms. And the reason I think this will be really good is that freeze-dried mealworms kind of remind me of puffed rice. And so I think there will be some nice parallels between the rice cracker and the mealworms. So let's see how this tastes. Let's get a good bite in there. That is actually so good. Mm, 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 mm. So, so delicious. <laughs> I keep making delicious things and I'm kind of shocked because I was expecting at least some of these recipes to not taste good, but it genuinely is yummy. I think the mealworms actually work really nicely with this rice cracker. I'm gonna give this a 9.5 out of 10. Mm, 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 mm. So up until now, every recipe has been way too delicious and it's kind of driving me crazy. I wanna really push the boundaries of mealworm recipes here. So I was thinking of making something a little edgier today and it dawned on me that ice cream or sorbet ice cream and mealworm sprinkles might be kind of a weird choice that might not be delicious, but also might be delicious. So today I'm doing a lemon sorbet with mealworm sprinkles. So I'm gonna first take a bite of plain sorbet just as kind of a reference point. So this is without, oh, that's so good. I love lemon sorbet. Oh, that's so good. 
Okay, that was without mealworms. Now let's get a nice little bite here. With mealworms. It's not bad, but it's definitely better without the mealworms. So this is the first recipe. This is the first recipe where I think I'm going to rate it a four. I'm pretty proud of myself for finding something that finally is not a nine. Yeah. Mm. I don't know. It's better without the mealworms, but it's not bad. Like the reason why mealworms go well with so much is because they're very neutral and kind of nutty and not too out there. But this is definitely better without the mealworms. Okay. So here we are, we are on day six, and today I'm eating these little chocolate dessert clusters made with cashews, cranberries, and mealworms, and I just mix these ingredients into melted dark chocolate, let them sit in the fridge for a little bit, and they turn into these delicious little dessert clusters. Now let's see if I can try one. So here's a cluster, let's see if I can... Oh my god. Mmm, this is so good. I also added a pinch of sea salt, so they're a little salty. I don't even see the wheel mealworms. Mmm. There's like a little piece of mealworm sticking out. But I love this recipe because it is so delicious and I don't really have to look that I'm eating mealworms. Mmm. This is a solid 11 out of 10. This is so good. I don't taste the mealworms, but I think they probably do add a little crunch. I'm gonna definitely add protein. Mm, 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 mm. Mm, mm. I legitimately think anyone would enjoy eating this and the mealworms are so well disguised that it's just not even... I have truly outdone myself. So today is our very last day of this mealworm experiment and we are having tacos. I've made tacos with corn tortillas, refried beans, avocado, iceberg lettuce. One of them I added mealworms and the other one I did not so we can kind of compare and contrast. Let me start by trying the plain one. Mmm, that's good. It's kind of hard to mess up a taco with refried beans and avocado. Now, let's do the mealworm taco. <laughs> I do like it. I don't know. These ratings are so random, but I think I'm going to give this recipe a 7 because it's good, but I feel like the mealworms don't add that much. Um, maybe a little bit of a crunch. It's good, but it's not my favorite recipe of the week. I really think yesterday's chocolate clusters take the cake, and that's a recipe I think literally everyone who likes chocolate would love. Mm, mm, mm. Cheers. All right, so we are back after a week of eating mealworms, and I have to say, by the end of the week, I felt a lot more comfortable with eating mealworms. When I look at this bag of mealworms, I don't have the same very subtle repulsion that I had at the beginning of the week and I think that's pretty incredible. It really shows that all of us can get used to eating certain things and even if I think back to the foods that I hated as a child like Brussels sprouts, 
I absolutely love Brussels sprouts today. Overall, it was a delicious experience and I would highly recommend experimenting with mealworms, especially the chocolate cashew clusters. They are just so incredibly good. If you like these videos where I try a healthy food for seven days, be sure to check out my seven days of broccoli sprouts video, which I will also link down below, and leave a comment of any other types of health foods you might want me to try out for seven days. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.